Okay, here we are again. Um, we're going to talk about our next topic. We're starting to look at the fish populations now. We've kind of talked about individual fish. Now we're going to look at a population of fish. So we're talking about all the fish of a given species that live in a given area. And what we're going to talk about here is population length structure. So basically the question that we're going to ask here is how many quality fish are in the population? So this is something that you can imagine would be important if you're a fish manager or if you're an angler. You want to know how many fish you have, but how many of those fish are quality fish? Are fish that the angler would like? That's sort of the question that we're getting at with this lecture. And we're going to do that with something called the Proportional Stock Density, or PSD. So if you've been reading anything or talking or going to any talks, you've probably heard them talking about PSD. This is what they're talking about. The PSD is the percentage of catchable or stock fish that are large enough to be considered quality fish. And I'll show you the calculations here in a second, but think about that for a moment. You've got stock what we call stock fish or catchable fish those fish what percentage are considered quality now note that this is not stocked fish this is not looking at the fish that you stocked but we're talking about stock fish and I know the terms can be a little confusing at first but think of a fish stock okay a fish stock is just another word for a fish population. Basically, what we're talking about here are what I consider catchable fish. It, we're ignoring the very small, we're ignoring the young of the year. And there's a reason for that. The reason is, is because the young of the year, you call in our last lecture, we talked about mortality and how mortality of young of the year fish is extremely high. Most of them are going to die anyway. Um, so you got this extreme large number of young of the year fish, and then you've got your older fish. Well, if you count those young of the year fish, first off, there's lots of variability. There's lots of variability in year class strength. Secondly, excuse me, their large numbers will sort of mess with your calculations. And so we ignore those. What we're really talking about are, say, an age one fish or, or a little bit larger fish. Again, the way I think of it is, is it's a catchable fish, a fish that an angler is likely to catch when they go out fishing. Well, here is the equation for the PSD. And you see it's the number that are greater than or equal to the quality size divided by the number that are greater than or equal to the stock size. So then multiply by 100 to convert it to percentage or um, to, to put, convert it to something that you can easily understand. This is the quality size and the stock size. Uh, just like with, say, relative weight, those are defined for each species, and everybody uses the same values for each species. And that way I can compare my PSDs to your PSDs. And if you study the formula, you can see clearly that this is looking at the percentage of the stock fish that are of quality size. Okay, well, I said that the stock size are defined for each species, but how do we calculate them? How, how do we decide what the stock size is? This was done a long time ago um, for each species. You can think of it as sort of the average age one fish length. So again, let's ignore the young of the year, but let's look at the age one, figuring that most of the time an age one fish is going to be a fish that, that can be caught by the angler. They might not want the age one fish, but it at least can be caught. And so this is how you think of the stock size. A more precise definition is that it's 20 to 26 percent of the world record for that species. And so that kind of allows you to keep the stock size relative among the different fish. Quality size, again, quality size is um, 
kind of a subjective thing, but because this was published and, and, and sort of decided and everybody uses the same one now, um, we're looking at something that's 36 to 41% of the world record. Now, I'm not sure if this was based upon angler interviews or I, I would imagine it was based upon looking at creel data and what anglers seem to take versus what they can take. Again, it's kind of a fairly narrow range here, and this allows you to define this quality size for different species of fish. Remember, again, we're basing this on the stock size fish, so you're ignoring the many small fish that are ignored by the anglers, probably not caught by the anglers, and that are going to die anyway. So, again, if you look closely at this formula, you can understand how this is going to tell you the quality of the angling experience, or it's going to give you an insight into the quality of your fish population. If this number is low, that means that very few of the fish you catch are going to be of quality size. If this number is high, you've got a lot, you know, a higher proportion of the catchable fish are quality fish. Okay. Let's do a quick run through um, example of this. Let's uh, for largemouth bass, we know the stock size is eight inches, so that's sort of an average size age one bass. If you think about it, that makes a lot of sense. Quality size is twelve inches, so that's kind of saying that the anglers will be somewhat happy with a twelve inch fish, but uh, you know they'll catch an eight inch fish, but no largemouth angler is happy catching eight inch largemouth. So we go out, we sample 100 bass, 30 of them are less than 8 inches, 20 of them are greater than 12 inches, so what's the PSD? Excuse me. Okay, first step, those 30 fish that are below 8 inches, forget about them. We don't eat them, right? So we're going to throw those out, we're going to work with the 70 fish that are stock size or larger. Of those 70 fish, 20 are greater than 12 inches. So our PSD is 20 divided by 70 times by 100 equals 28. Um, don't forget that your quality size fish are part of the stock, right? So you've got 70 stock size fish, 70 fish that are greater than 8 inches. Of those 70, 20 are greater than 12 inches, or 28% of the stock size fish are greater than 12 inches. Um, one way to think about this is if I go fishing in this lake and if I catch 100 bass, about 28 of them are going to be over 12 inches. Um, so my question here is, does that seem like a great place to bass fish? If you figure, uh, you know, if you catch 100 fish in a day, that's a really good day fishing. So you're probably not going to catch that many, but say you did. So you'd have to probably fish all day. Maybe an Emaquan, you might catch 100 in a morning. You might catch 100 in an hour if you're fishing an Emaquan. But if you catch 100 bass and only 28 of them are greater than 12 inches, me personally, that's not a great day fishing. It'd be a lot of fun, you're catching fish, but you're not catching very big fish. And remember, bass anglers are often looking for really big fish. Um, and then, of course, realize that in this pot lake, there may be a whole lot of bass below 8 inches. They do not figure into this calculation. And if you think about bass fishing, you're unlikely to catch a bass less than 8 inches unless they're really hungry. Okay. So now related to this idea is something called relative stock density, or RSD. RSD is the same calculation, same idea, but instead of looking at the quality size fish, you're evaluating a particular size of fish. So you're defining the size of fish that you're interested in. So whereas quality fish is defined already for each species and includes all fish greater than the quality size, RSD you define, and you define it for whatever size you're interested in. Consequently, when you're doing an RSD, you have to indicate that size. If I just did a PSD of largemouth bass, everybody would know what I'm talking about. 
If I did an RSD of largemouth bass, I got to tell you RSD what? So, for example, I, if I threw out an RSD 15, that means I'm looking at all the stock size fish that are greater than or equal to 15 inches. Okay. Um, this can also be used for a size range. For example, if you have a, if you're looking at a slot size, and so if I had something like an RSD 12 to 15, that of course is the number of stock size fish that are within the 12 to 15 inch slot. And so it's the same idea, but you can just apply it really however you want to apply it. So this gives you uh, the idea of the proportion of the catchable fish or the stock fish in a given size range and that therefore can give you more specific information about your population. So if you're trying to look at those 12 to 15 inch fish um, that are going to be you know, real good eaters, this is going to tell you what proportion of the stock fish are in that range. If you have a slot limit, you can talk about what proportion of the fish are going to fall within that slot limit. Um, so let's go back to the first example with PSD. The PSD for our example was 28. So if you catch a bass, there's a 28% chance that it's greater than 12 inches, eh, right? But let's say on that same data, we found out that the RSD 20 is 22. That would mean that of those stock fish, 22% are greater than 20 inches. Um, so what would that mean? That means there, the PSD is 28. So there's not very many fish that are quality size. There's not many fish greater than 12 inches. But the RSD 20 is 22. I know these numbers can get confusing. But that means that of the 28 stock percent of the stock size fish that are greater than 12 inches, 6% are between 12 or 6% 6 of the stock size fish are between 12 and 20 inches and 22% are greater than 20 inches. You see how that breaks down the 28%? So let me repeat that. Of all the stock size fish, of all the catchable fish in this population, only 28% are above 12 inches. 6% are between 12 and 20. Excuse me. I know I should turn my phone off before I go to lecture, but well, I'm at home, so I didn't think about it. Um, so 6% are between 12 and 20 inches, and 22% are greater than 20 inches. So there aren't a whole heck of a lot of bigger, of, of quality fish in this population, but the ones that are there are big. That's the way you would use an RSD. Okay, now another way that people have used the RSD um, to break it down even further and to try to actually define some different ranges um, is to break it down into quality size, preferred size, memorable size, and trophy size. So quality we've already done, right? Quality is what we use for the PSD. But some people, specifically Don Gablehouse is the name that you'll run into. I believe he's from Kansas, Nebraska area. He uh, was one of the first ones to start talking about preferred size, memorable size, and trophy size, and to define those for some of the more common sport fish. And that way you can, again, look at the proportion of bass that are preferred size, the proportion that are memorable size, the proportion that are trophy size. And then a lot of times they use those in kind of a range. So you talk about the RSD that are from the quality to preferred range, the RSD that are in the preferred to memorable range. Example, that was, that's how this was intended to use. And so if you have those defined and look at those for your population, again, that gives you a little fine tuning on the different sizes of fish that you have. Um, so this is an attempt to talk about you know, how can I identify the higher quality fisheries and, 
and things like that. So if I looked at the RSD trophy size for bass, that would tell me the percentage of fish, the percentage of bass that are catchable that are also trophy size. And that might be something that you're trying to manage for. Another way to look at this is it's sort of a way of giving the angler the probability that the fish they catch being a trophy. So if my RSD trophy is five, hey, if I go catch a bass from this lake, there's a 5% chance that it's going to be trophy, which I'm not sure what it is for largemouth, but it's probably pretty big. It's probably 20 inches. So 5% uh, of all the bass I catch in this pond are going to be that big. That's a pretty good pond. Okay, uh, just a little um, information for you so that you guys are, are aware of this. There was recently a, a paper written in Fisheries where they're trying to change the name to PSS instead of PSD. And that's going to be proportional stock structure. Uh, not sure if this name change has gained any traction, but keep your eyes open. So if you see people talking PSS, that's what they're doing is they're actually trying to change the name. And the reason they wanted to change the name is because they felt that PSD was misleading. Because it's really not a density in the sense that we use density in fisheries. It's not a number per unit area. It's a proportion of the stock. And there's my doorbell. So we'll take a time out. So the PSD is actually useless without some sort of measure of fish density. So let me show you an example. All right, let me, let me reiterate that. You must know the population density to properly evaluate the stock density. So that's why earlier we talked about CPUE and mercury capture and having an idea of how many fish you have per hectare. You got to know that to effectively use PSD and RSD. So let's, like, let's look at an example here. You've got two lakes. If you look at the number of quality fish versus the number of stock fish, you see the PSD is 50. So half of the catchable fish are of quality size. But are these lakes equal? Do they have the same quality fishery? Of course not. You've got a heck of a lot more fish in Lake 2. So knowing the PSD is only half of it, you also need to know CPUE or some measure of density to properly evaluate and use the PSD and the RSD. Um, so if you look at the previous example, the angler has a much higher probability of catching a fish in Lake 2 because CPUE is higher. The probability, once you catch a fish, of that fish being quality is the same for both lakes. So if you catch a fish in either lake, there's a 50-50 chance that it's going to be a quality fish. But you're going to catch a lot more fish per hour in Lake 2, you would expect. So you need both of those pieces of information to evaluate your lakes. So having said that, take a look at this final slide here. And you've got uh, three different lakes. You've looking at PSD of largemouth bass, the RSD18 of largemouth bass, and the CPUE of largemouth bass. Um, so given that, which of these would be more desirable to a bass angler? I think um, I'm going to go ahead and leave that to you, and maybe we'll have a discussion on this later. But look at these numbers and think about them and have an answer prepared for when we do have that discussion. Other than that, um, that is population size structure. It's the PSD and the RSD. Fairly simple calculations, but very useful. And in the next lecture, we're going to show different ways that we can use those to further evaluate our fish community. Thanks a lot.